science. We get experimental yes. science. We're curious, non judgmental. Any guesses on to what the heck this is? It is a fish. Ugly, how dare, Brooke? It's a beautiful fish. It is cl clear it is a fish! Well, so hagfish, it turns out, can change their color with the same similar cell type as what uh, cephalopods do, those chromatophores, mm. so that these respond to different light and the image that they're near, and even like upon tactile stimulation, uh, they can change the colors of their body to blend in better with their surroundings, which I think is really, really cool. So, um, sorry, hogfish, not hag. I've been misreading the letters. Okay, all right. That's entirely different. A hagfish is an actual thing. Yes, it is. I've been misreading the letter the entire time. But here is the hogfish, not the hagfish. Um, and it responds to the environment, able to change its colors, and it's super cool of a fish. It's like the, the RAS, W-R-A-S-S-E, cluster of fish, which I always know the cleaner RAS that, like, eat the the bacteria and decaying skin off, like, other fish to keep them clean. But these are more like bottom feeders, eating, like, urchins um, and those kinds of organisms. So it does do like squid neurolicious. They have these chromatophores. There are rhodopsins underneath the chromatophores. So rhodopsins are essentially the same cells that you have that animals have in their eyes, right? It's like they're detecting color and it's like their color vision uh, component. And so it turns out these animals, they have that layer of skin or like here, like the fish scales underneath that are the chromatophores. So that's going in the same order as you would have for squid uh, and even octopi. But then there's a layer of these opsins. There's these cells underneath. First of all, it was number one is the discovery of those cells. They, they just saw a weird cell type that was underneath and actually we'll show you a zoom in of what the this, this skin actually looked like. So this is the same hog fish, but they're able to change color. Right, depending on the different stimulus that they're undergoing. So like like what they're near to blend into their surroundings. So you can see the fish moving from like this much more white color to this more reddish color and even in between. So they were looking at the skin and they found the chromatophores and they're like, great, this is presumably gonna be a very similar mechanism to what we have with our squid. But then they found these um, rhodopsin cells underneath. And the rhodopsin cells, again, are usually respond to changes in light that give animals vision. They, they had an interview. They did a, it was a really nice statement because as soon as you hear rhodopsins and eye cells, you might be like, oh, are the, the fish seeing with their skin or something like that? And that would be a very, that's not the, what they're uh, saying. What they say is, and this is a quote, light striking the skin passes through the pigment filled chromatophores first and reaches a light sensing layer. The animals are almost taking a photo of their own skin from the inside. Um, but just to be clear, we are not arguing that the hogfish skin functions like an eye. So it is a light sensing organ. They have a hypothesis of what this is for. They think it's a, a mean for the fish to know if it's blending in with the environment is what they're arguing. They have yet to do the genetics, like to knock out that cell type and see if the fish is like fully aware if all of a sudden like it's blending in with an environment but it's that the argument that they're making is because it looks like there are neural connections from that those rhodopsin cells going to the brain that it's like recognition that I have now blended in into something so are they saying the fish changes its color based on its eye like how does it know what to change to because octopus don't do that it's like independent of brain activity so is it is this a new kind of color changing like it's dependent on the brain input so it seems to be decoupled so if they take a skin sample mm -hmm. if you do the same thing for octopus if you put just a skin sample underneath the microscope you yep. can get those chromatophores to react yes if you take, so here is the, the cell layers that they're looking at. So there is the epithelial layers on top. Actually, here's a nice little diagram. There's the epithelial layers on top, the cells, there's the chromatophores underneath. And so what they had in the past was with the, the octopi and the squid is just these two layers. 
and if you gave them different stimuli, then what you'd end up happening is those chromatophores would change different colors. Okay. Here, there are the rhodopsin expressing cells that's labeled in green at this particular region. Mm -hmm. If they don't have that in the dish, mm -hmm. then the cells don't change color. So it is it and so it's not directly connected to the brain. Like well in that dish, right? If you've taken a skin sampling, it's right. just like it has those rhodopsins. So it's a, it is then a different way of being able to match color Interesting. that they're blending in. Okay, all right, so yeah. chat, let me explain my question. Blint knows my question because he's used to my shenanigans. Um, a lot of animals that can change color it's not directly controlled by the brain. Like the animal doesn't walk into a, onto a green leaf and say, oh, this is a lovely green. I'm going to change the shade of my skin. That's usually not how it happens. It's sort of independent of the brain. It's more of a reflex. So there's some kind of organ in the skin or some kind of system that can automatically adjust its pattern or its color to its environment, like whatever is appropriate. And like I said, you don't need typically for color changing. So when the scientists, so that's where my question is coming in. So when the scientists are talking about this particular fish seems to have a slightly different way of changing its color in response to the environment, I'm just wondering what level of brain input is needed for this particular color change. According to the interview, it sounds like they think that there's more neural feedback maybe than what I would expect from other animals. In the interview as well, I'm not convinced by that statement. Most of the paper is looking at the connection between like the, the, the composition of the skin, the dermal okay. layer. And they're like, they do scanning electron micro or transmission electron microscopy with a nice cross sections to see what cell types are in there and showing that there are connections between the chromatophores and these opsin cells. Okay. So that they are in fact communicating with one another, which I think is nice. They yeah. develop some uh, genetic tools to not manipulate the fish per se, but to do uh, labeling. Mm -hmm. So to mark within the cells that they think are important and where the opsins are located so they can, so it's, it's remember this is a non-model organism that the, this is not a organism that has been studied a hundred years like fruit flies with a lot of genetic tools available. So it's like the very beginnings of a new system and to be able to study just the fundamental genetics. Yeah, so chat, anybody who doesn't know, we have model organisms. So we have the animals that we do a lot of studies in because every time you go to another animal, even if it's very closely related, you have to like reinvent the wheel. All of the tools and tricks, molecular and genetic things that you can do with a mouse had to sort of be redone for the rats and so on and so forth. You know, guinea pigs, hamsters, stuff that are really closely related. And so every time you have a new species, again, it's like reinventing the scientific wheel and it takes a long time. So stuff that you could very easily do in like zebrafish, which is a model organism. So they have a whole bunch of um, tools and tricks that they already have, you know, developed over the last 50 years can't just directly apply to this new fish. So it's a big deal to start studying a uh, new species in like a molecular or genetic kind of way. It would have been neat to do the genetics of nerfing the opsins. I think the physical removal was sufficient to answer this question, but I would like to see like what the genetics are of it, right? I mean, I'd like to see some neural blocking or something to see what kind of feedback there is to the brain. But that's because I'm a brain kind of girl. Like, it's hard to get the neurobiology out of me. Yeah, Lita's right. You could very well block certain neurons if you're especially or even some some nice neurophysiology or some electrophysiology where you can put in probes and see like okay are you getting a signal running from this neuron that's attached to the opsin to the brain and back and then just block it and see like will this cluster of cells not change color how do you block the neurons asks spikes um, there's a lot of different ways. So I just said like, well, they don't have to use genetics, but okay, my favorite way to do it is actually to just uh, trigger it with genetics. Um, Cause flies are the best uh, or cell culture. 
do it with genetics. Um, but there's a lot of chemical compounds that you can use um, that can target pretty specific neurons. You can just block different parts. Of, like you can actually just like freeze up um, the parts of the cell that either receive signals or send signals. You can just be like, no more for you. Or like just depolarize the neuron entirely. Um, so it can't send an electrical signal. I mean, it's cool. I just, I want to know about the neural feedback. Because that would be novel. That would be really different than other animals who change their skin color. Yeah, and already that, given how they change their skin color, is different. It'd be cool if that had that connection. What we had talked about, usually representing visual cells, these opsins underneath the chromatophores and the skin of the hogfish and how it allows them to help change the skin cells as a response to their environment and help blend in better. So those were our three science news stories of the day. I hope you all very much enjoyed them.